In this video, we're gonna draw the marbled effect together. Hi, my name is Esther Nariyoshi. I am an illustrator, designer, and a top teacher on Skillshare. You're watching my quick snack series here, where I explain how to use Adobe Illustrator in short episodes for designers and illustrators of all skill levels. So we're gonna get started by just plopping down some ovals. So press L on your keyboard and make sure you have a fill color and then just go ahead and draw some ovals. And then we're gonna use the warp tool, which is shift R on your keyboard, or that is under the width tool. If you long press, you will see the one next door. It's called a warp tool. So this one basically lets you do some kneading to your shape. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Wait a minute. I realized that my color is a little bit too dark. It's very similar to the anchor points color. So I'm gonna switch it out so you can see the anchor points a little bit better. All right, going back to the warp tool. This little circle basically shows me the influence of my warp tool. You can also double click to tweak the details over here. And you can also change the angle, intensity, detail. Just play with it and see what this one does. This little circle around my cursor is basically my brush. So if you were to just brush it on the shape, it will push the boundary. It looks a little bit too small, so I'm gonna undo and then double click. You can increase the diameter and play with the intensity, detail, simplify, and all that fun stuff. But I'm gonna do it more intuitively and more visually, which is holding option on your keyboard. This will let you stretch out your brush size visually. So I want my brush to be comparable in size with my ovals. In this way, if I were to just move it around, it looks more like a blob. I'm just gonna go around and change the shape of all three blobbies. I'm happy with this one. And then I wanna make it a bit smaller and put it to the side. By the way, I'm using the free transform, which is E on your keyboard. And now I wanna make the marble shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a bunch of rectangle, which is M on your keyboard. And for each rectangle, I want it to be a different color. So I'm gonna choose a, actually I'm gonna make this one a different color as well. So I'm holding option key to make a duplicate. I want the two rectangle to have at least a bit of overlap. I will explain to you what this one means and then make a third one and give it a different color. So the reason is that when I start doing the marbling effect, my rectangle is going to shift, but when they overlap, they don't shift too much to a point that I see the gap in between. So you want to have a pretty generous overlap in between shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the warp tool we just used, or if you haven't, you can click on your width tool and then go all the way down to twirl. You can pretty much tell what this means by just reading the name. It will create tiny tornadoes within the shape. So that's how we get the marbling effect. And you can also, of course, double click on this twirl tool to tweak your options. You can make it a little bit slower or less intense. It's really up to you. I'm actually pretty happy with what I have, but I'm not super sure about the color because the contrast between the coral and the yellow is not super great. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and double click one of my color group in my swatches panel. And this will take me to the recolor artwork. And then I can just switch out color. Ooh, I like this one. See that I have a different combination. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK. All right. So now I'm going to put my three little blobbies on top. They're going under because of the layer arrangement. So I'm going to bring them up by pressing Command Shift right bracket. I want to make sure all the area is covered. And you can also turn down the opacity so that you can see through. Or you can change to a different blending mode, which is multiply. It doesn't affect my final color. I just want to make sure I have a nice placement. For instance, this little blobby doesn't get any marbling effect. That's pretty sad. I'm going to move it over to here. OK, so now I have the placement and everything worked out. I will need to make clipping mask. A clipping mask is complicated to explain, but very simple to show. For example, if I have the bottom swirl and this top blobby selected, I can just go ahead and right click and make a clipping mask. As you can see, it takes the shape of my blobby on top, but it takes the color of the bottom layer. So I'm going to undo because I will need to use this because I will need to use this twirl shape or marbling shape three times. So I will need to copy this guy by using Command C. So first I'm going to select this blobby, blobby number three, and the twirl. Press Command 7 for a clipping mask. And then I'm going to paste it back up by using Command F, which means place in front. And then make another clipping mask by using a different blobby. Command 7. And then because I still have the twirl shape selected, I'm going to press Command F to paste in place one more time. I don't see my blobby anymore because it's hiding underneath. I don't know how the layer arrangement get messed up. But anyways, I'm just going to select my twirl shape and then send them back to the bottom of the stack. Command shift left bracket. Now I see my blobby here. So I'm going to select these guys and then right click, make clipping mask. So now I have three. It's kind of awkward when you hover over, you still see the outline of the entire swirl. That's because the clipping masks only hides what's not being shown. It doesn't really cut it off. For example, if you were to double click one of those and click it again, you still have the access to the original shape which can be nice, but if you have a lot of these guys on your artboard, it will slow your machine down. So, well, by the way, I just pressed um, escape to get out of the isolation mode. So what I'm going to do is to select all my shape and just to kind of do a cookie cutting thing by using the Pathfinder, which you can find in Window and all the way, almost all the way down here, Pathfinder. I have it stacked right here. It's this little icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click Crop. This is basically the cookie cutter thing that I was talking about. And of course, it did not work. That's because I need to do it one by one. So I'm just going to undo, click one thing, and cut it, one thing, and crop it. In this way, what you see is what you get. 
you don't really get the entire monster shape behind it. All right, that's how you make it. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Go check out my Skillshare classes by clicking the link below to get a free trial. I will see you next time.